Okay, so are we live now in Facebook? Let me just check. Are we live now in Facebook, YouTube, and Kumu? Okay, so hello everyone. Good afternoon. Hello and welcome Rockstars. I'm Jen, your host, and I'm thrilled to have you join us for another exciting edition or episode of the Gen Z Show, our weekly Monday live stream. So today we are coming to you live from our official social media platforms. We are live in Facebook, YouTube, and Kumu app. So if you're watching from Facebook, via Tachi Careers, YouTube also, and Kumu app, please don't forget to like, to share this video, drop your names, drop your location, so that we can give you a shout out. So hello again to you guys, for those who are watching on those social media platforms. And for those who might be just new, to the Gen Z show. So it's your first time to hear about the Gen Z show. It's your first time to like or to subscribe to our social media platforms. I want to extend a warm welcome to you guys. Welcome to our the Gen Z show. Yes, guys, you heard it right. Because a lot of viewers would usually say that it's Gen Z, like it's not a typo, so it's really like letter C. So, guys, you heard it right when I say that it's the Gen Z show. It stands for the Generational Career Show. We go live every Monday at 5 p.m. aiming to provide you with valuable insights, career, specifically career insights and discussion from our awesome rockstar in-house employees as well as also to our external guests okay so make sure that you never miss out any of our live streams or any of our future online or personal events make sure to follow our social media profiles as you can check on our banner okay on our banner right now here Follow our social media platforms on Facebook, Viber, IG, TikTok, LinkedIn, and YouTube, okay? And we also have an exciting news for you guys. We have an exciting announcement to share. This coming Friday or this coming October 27th, we will going to be hosting another virtual job fair from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. Whether you're interested in admin roles, customer service, digital marketing, e-commerce, engineering, architecture, IT and software, or accounting and finance, we've got a wide range of positions available that cater to various skills and interests, okay? So as you can see, guys, in our screen, okay? So we do have hiring in digital marketing. We do have enterprise production admin, e-commerce development manager. So for those who are into e-commerce, guys, we do have hirings for you. Those also who has, you know, want to be part of the creative team, we also looking for a creative designer. And for those who are into PPC or digital advertising, we also have a job for you guys who are looking for a digital advertising specialist. For those who are into accounting and finance, we are looking for finance controller, senior staff accountant, accounts payable clerk, business valuation manager, U.S. tax accountant, U.S. accountant, and investment banking analyst. For engineering and architecture, so basically like this three are should be coming from Cebu. We are looking for CAD specialist or AutoCAD specialist, engineering project manager, and splicers. For our rock stars, specifically on Ortigas, we are looking for landscape architect. So for those architect guys who are currently located in Ortigas or in Luzon, we are looking for you. For customer service, we do have front test specialists, healthcare billing specialists, pre-authorization specialists, and pre-certification specialists. If you are in the healthcare industry and your expertise is really in customer service, we are looking for you guys. In IT and software development, we are looking for senior IT engineer and full stack developer with UI or UX experience. If you want to be part of the internal team or the support team of Tache, we are looking for senior talent acquisition specialists. Be part of the recruiter's team, maintenance staff, inside sales B2B specialists, or a corporate sales specialist, 
and employee experience specialist. So those are the positions that we are opening for you guys. So again, join our job fair this coming Friday, October 27th from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. And if you're looking for the link on where you are going to be registering to, so where you know more we have here in our screen, we have it here in the banner. We also, um, please also check our comment section for this specific live stream. Yes, just click that specific link. And it will route to the registration area or to, or to the re registration page. So make sure to tag your fans, tag your family members who you think who is qualified for the role or do you want them to be part also of the awesome Rockstar team of that chat. Okay. And speaking of Rockstar, our guest for today is no stranger to our team. I'm pretty much sure that you're familiar with her you've seen her not just in the tachi careers but also to the official page of tachi outsourcing she's one of our very own employee a professional in the healthcare industry with a specialization in customer service she is also an accomplished communications trainer with a top host of our company events she's not just a star in her own right but also an expert that's essential for all aspiring professionals and career enthusiasts She's here on our every Monday live show stream to share her wisdom with regards with the art of self-promotion, how to showcase your accomplishments and achievements. Her insights will surely empower you to navigate the delicate balance of self-promotion with grace. So take out your notepads and get ready to learn from one of our Rockstar employees. Please join me in giving a warm welcome for today's guest, Miss Sai. Hi, Hello, everyone. Hello, Jen. Hello, everyone who's watching tonight. Yes. So right now, Sai, we have like our specific live stream is um live in our Facebook, YouTube, and also in Kumu app. So say hello to them, Sai. So guys, if you do have, if you know Sai, or you know, if you want to ha have like a shout out, please just drop your name into the comment section and we'll definitely give you one. Okay. So Sai, our topic for today, it's all about the art of self-promotion, how to showcase your accomplishments and achievements. Okay. This is one of the topics that usually, you know, because usually when we have our topics, like we were going to be asking our viewers, like what are the unusual topics that you want to discuss or unusual topics that, you know, you might get scared or there's no one usually that you know, you think that would really answer all of your concerns or whatsoever. So we are so happy, Sai, that we have you here to talk about this self-promotion because it's not really that usual, right? We would say self-promotion, how you how am I going to be showcasing my accomplishments and achievements in a most professional way, okay? So to start with, Sai, um, what do you think or what is a self-promotion and why is it important? in today's competitive world. Hey, thank you, Jen. And before anything else, I would like to thank um, the Tache for inviting me here tonight on this live streaming. And I'm very glad to be here with you tonight sharing, you know, some words of wisdom, some, uh, what do you call this? Some of my experiences before. So with regards to your question, Jen, um, what is self-promotion? So all of you who's watching right now might be a little bit of like questioning themselves. What is really self-promotion? So from the word self, it is you. And from the word promotion, you're like promoting yourself. And sometimes, Jen, and to our viewers, um, self-promotion is about um sharing our achievements and skills to the entire world of course um jobs nowadays considering our generation um we just don't seek jobs within the philippines we can also get um land job outside the philippines for example um us clients uk clients so basically around the world so you are like selling yourself to the entire world, I would say. And sometimes people might misconcept self-promotion from bragging. So when mm -hmm. we say bragging, you're like, 
you're like, um, okay, I had this experience. So people might say, no, mm, she's, she's a bit of showing off. <laughs> but there are things that you will be learning all the way throughout if you just stay tuned with us up until the rest of the end of the show. And there will be, you know, advices we'll be giving you on how to uh, do self-promoting in a good way and not, you know, to sound bragging. Yes. Right. And I do agree with you that one side. A lot of, of applicants basically hear with that acquisition, like I think they can really add more with regards to their resume or they can do or they can say more with regards with their during their interviews, but they are afraid because they are afraid that they will be taxed as, you know, that you're so much bragging or just showing off and whatsoever. So it's a good way, side that we can really have like a distinction for that one. Like sure. the art of, you know, doing self-promotion versus just like bragging and telling a lot of more stuff. Okay. So when you say that, you know, how to do self-promotion, can you share, Sai, like some of the effective tips for our viewers on how they can say that or how they can show their achievements either in a personal and of course professional growth so as you've mentioned earlier jen that there are applicants um you know um as part of your team or the team of talent acquisition they're looking for candidates for suitable job roles and as you mentioned earlier they might be afraid that you guys might say nah ah, this applicant is a little bit braggy about it. But when we say bragging out, it's when you speak about your experience in a very negative way. So, for example, the tone of your voice, mm -hmm. how, how you provide your experience, if it was provided in a nicer way or, you know, in a way that you sound bragging. Now, tips on how to effectively um self-promote i would say number one you should know your what do you call that understand how your abilities line with the company or the position that you're applying for so when we say understanding your abilities it is when you try to self-evaluate yourself so for example you are in the line of accountancy. So if you are in the line of accountancy, do you think you will you will try to self-promote yourself in the other fields? Of course, it's like crossing another bridge, right? So another tip is that, you know, uh, let me just um, include this. Um, there are a lot of benefits actually for self-promoting. Um, Jan and to the viewers that, um, are actually watching this live tonight. The number one tip I can give you is try to differentiate yourself from the other candidates. So I've, you know, before when I was still starting, I always make sure that I am different from the other candidates. For example, you have the same um, education background, you get master's degree, you have the same work experiences. So as hiring managers, the question is, why should we hire you? Considering that <laughs> you have the same, no, you know, you have the same background, you have the same experiences. So try to think of your most, I would say your most or the best that you can give. The best thing that you can try to differentiate from other people. So Take note and do your research. <laughs> yes, I really yeah. do agree on that one side. Like with regards with, you know, uh, making sure, of course, during the interview, it's not just really, it's because it's just really selling yourself. But of course, it's just, I think it's just the only way and how you will going to be telling those specific hiring managers that, hey, you should hire me. It's because I got this, I got that and everything. And then also one way, as a point of a recruiter, guys, okay, just make sure that whatever else also into your resume also really, really reflects. And speaking of resume, okay, Sai, what are, as a communications um, trainer or as part of, you know, in your experience, um, do you have any you know, suggestions or ways on how you can tailor fit 
your resume with regards with your accomplishment because there might be like your resume is just a one pager but there might be like a lot of accomplishments or there might be like too much accomplishments too much right. seminars or whatsoever so what do you what do you think is how like a competitive resume that really balances when you say in showcasing your accomplishments and achievements all right thank you so much jen for that very relevant and timely question especially <laughs> that you know sometimes um there are you know fresh graduates who'd like to land a job in the industry that we have for example in the bpo they don't have experiences with um you know applying for a job so it it might be you know kind of difficult for them to create a resume um for those who are experienced and would want to you know try to really excel and try to make their resume, you know, a bit more interesting for the clients. Um, I have 10 tips <laughs> that <laughs> I actually I did prepare for this. And this is actually based on personal experience. So this might not work to everyone, but this is such a great, you know, tips that might help you. Um, number one, Jen, I would say that we try to use a specific job description. So, mm -mm. you know, job description will always outline what the company or let's say recruiters or hiring manager is looking for. So as an applicant, we should always carefully read the job description and take note of the required skills, qualifications, and responsibilities. So some key things to look out for includes the following. Number one, whether you need to have a degree or not, how many years of experience are required. Third is what are the day-to-day -day responsibilities are. Your previous work experience is very important, especially if it outlines or, you know, relevant to the application or the job that you're currently applying for. And the tools that you'll need to be familiar with. So that's number one tip. Take note, guys. I am ho <laughs> hoping that you have a pen and paper handy with you. <laughs> and of course, second is very important. Research the company. So looking into the company that you're applying to, what they do and what they stand for is crucial in job searching. Knowing these facts during the interview process makes a massive difference. As a bonus, it's not as expected in the application process. So understanding the mission, values, and vision can help you stand out, right? So, Jen, I would say Yeah, I think we lost you in that one side. Okay, guys, I think our very own speaker is having like a difficulty with regards with his, uh, with regards with her internet connection, but don't worry, okay? So number one, Sai mentioned about, with regards with, um, she mentioned about, you know, having into your resume, number one, is to make, you know, the job description, make it concise, with regards also with your um experiences okay so as a recruiter on that standpoint i agree on that one guys your resume reflects you so it's one way for us to know about your list of experiences it's, it's one way for us to gauge if you're shortlisted for the role or not okay tips about i agree Sai. what mentioned about the experiences to add a job description a summary of job description will do okay for that one in that case that's very important we should really know like what are the summary of your day-to-day -day task and what is really your task all about we can see that you are an executive assistant or an offshore virtual assistant or a social media manager a lot would be out there like a social media manager but what's specific or what makes you distinct to other social media managers or executive assistants out there okay second is to make sure that you add what sai mentioned is about the tools 
that's very important of course specifically for those technically related tools okay so number one if you are really with regards with accounting what are the accounting related tools make sure that it is directly connected with regards with the position that you are applying for like for example here with Tache, we're looking for senior accountant senior accountant that has experience with regards with um tools right so specifically with quickbooks okay so if you have an experience with regards with that specific tool so please make sure that you need to you know to add that one into your job description if you are an engineer of course your autocad drafter make sure that you put it also into your resume whatever that it is related to your tool okay also for it and software if you have this specific tool guys again it's not really all about that you will going to be mentioning it all your top what is really needed for the job versus what also what is also you know really depicting into your resume so that would really make a lot okay so sai right now is right here i know she's just doing also some technical checks but sai i'm just doing like a wrap up of what you have mentioned on the number one like the job description how important it is second is with regards with the tools that you will going to be using so sai i'll just yes i know you're back yeah I just gave you know, a wrap up with regards to the number one, like the job description, the tools. I'm saying this one in a recruiter's POV, guys. Tools are very important, specifically with the type of job that you're applying to, okay? So number one with, with regards, for example, if you're applying for a front-end developer or that has an express with UI or UX, there's this specific um, jobs that really requires that specific um, tools or softwares, and it will really be an edge if it will really reflect into your resume okay and sai second i know you mentioned about uh yes um the second tip that i was like talking earlier i'm really sorry guys um are you by the way chen are you in cebu or outside cebu yeah i'm in cebu right now in our office in juanito omg you know what? It has been, you know, really such a rainy season nowadays. And, you know, the internet, I'm really sorry for cutting you off, but I'm back. <laughs> anyway, so going back, as I was saying earlier, researching about the company is such a great advantage. So if you are an applicant, researching about the company's mission, values, and vision can help you stand out. For example, um, before, when I left my previous company, um, I was, you know, looking for a job that is aligned with my experience in the healthcare. And then I found Touch It. But before the interview with, I believe that was Wei who did my initial interview. Yes. So before I had the interview with her, there are two things I did. Number one, I look into Touch It's Facebook account. And good thing, I would say not good, I would say best thing about it is that the Facebook fan page is updated. So the, you know, monthly activities, um, point of view of employees, of, you know, their experiences. And number two, looking into touches, vision, goals, and vision and mission. That, I would say, was one of my advantage um, before I was hired. In that shape. And yeah, moving forward, uh, don't forget number two, you're researching the company. And of course, number three, dedicate time to the top half of your resume. So when I say dedicate half of the top part of your resume, so what are those? Um, your photo, of course, your photo must be professional looking. So no selfies, no. You know, there's those snapshot filters, I would say. So when we say professional, you in a suit or business casual, I would say. Because if I am an employer, of course, I would look into the person who I will be interviewing. Because nowadays, our interviews, there are face-to-face. -face, but as our generation or as our technology gets even higher, we do um, phone calls, video conference, something like that, right, Jen? So yeah. the photo, number one, is very important. Number two, of course, must include your most active phone number and your email address. Because 
how can our recruit recruiter contact you if you don't have an update fo- updated phone number, right? So you're losing your chance to get the job. So that's number two. The number three, of course, highlight your educational background, um, your skills. That's very important. So what are your skills? Are you tax savvy? Do you know how to use Microsoft Excel, Word, so on and so forth? And the third one must be your experiences. And that is one of the most important things, right, Jen? From a recruiter's point of view, um, what do you think, though? Yes, I do argue on that one, okay? Let's go back again what you have mentioned in the second part when you mentioned about just please do research about, about the company. You know what, guys? Skills can really be trained, but the attitude is really not. It's really important that you need to make sure like the core values of the company if you're really culturally fit for that one okay second i like it when it's when you discuss about like the half part of the resume it's really true number one guys you should maximize right now the usage of ai there has been a lot of photo labs or whatsoever in there that's going on with regards with the facebook so you need to maximize don't not just use them with regards with your profile pictures on Facebook, so on and so forth. Maximize that one to the use of your resume, okay? Before, I remember it, Sai, that if ever we need a formal picture, we just really need to line up to that photo <laughs> studio, make sure to wear a blazer, so on and so forth, and then just the one snap, and then we got our right. photos. Right now, guys, maximize our technology now, nowadays, maximize the AI for you to have that very good picture. Second, I really do appreciate, so I believe it or not, there are still resumes that doesn't really have the contact numbers or <laughs> some have really an erroneous email address. Guys, please make sure to have your most updated contact numbers. One tip is to add like a secondary number. It's, for example, if the other one, if the other line is not available, then there's other line that our recruiters can really call. Second is to have your email address. I would really appreciate if it's a professional email address. Okay. Third, yes, please to highlight also your skill sets. One that I have mentioned, whatever that it is, you know, applicable to the position that you are applying for. Let's go back again to my example with regards with, um, the accountants. There are a lot of U.S. accountant that is hiring. There are a lot of U.S. accountant who's been, you know, giving a resume or whatsoever. But what will really make you, you know, stand out is, for example, if you do have an experience with regards with QuickBooks. Not really all of those people out there knows what QuickBooks and is really proficient with QuickBooks. If you were just going to be putting it there, that's very um important. If everyone going to be doing paper screening and then also your experiences. Again, Sai mentioned about adding like a job description or job job description or summary because there are a lot of U.S. accountants also there that, hi, I'm U.S. accountant for five years, for six years, for seven years, but what really depicts is we would check on your job description that, okay, so these are your skill set. So I think you have that specific day-to-day task that is really, you know, relatable or much to the, to the position that we are really looking for. So I really agree on you on that one side. So I'm really hoping that our viewers are taking notes of that one, okay? We are really giving here a lot of benefits for you guys on how you are going to be acing your job interviews here with Tatche. And then also if you are going to be joining our job fair this Friday, okay? Yes. So do you want to add some or those are the list of things no. that you think that can really tailor fit someone's resume? Think, showcasing? Yeah, I think those are the most important. Okay. Yes. Speaking yeah. since we've we've talked about the social platforms and AI and so forth, so I would like to ask, like, how does one's online presence, you know, such as in LinkedIn and then to your personal website or personal social media um, pages or account, play a role in showcasing your accomplishments? All right. So um, let's talk about the online presence. Like, for example, if you have Upwork or let's say LinkedIn um, or other websites that potential clients might see your expertise or your experiences. So aside from attracting potential employers or clients, Jen, strong online presence can also provide access to valuable networking opportunities. So LinkedIn, for example, I have LinkedIn before I um, joined Hatchet. 
Um, it is an excellent platform for making professional connections. So when I say professional connections, you'll get to see a lot of people um, in LinkedIn that has the same, you know, um, what do you call this? I would say experiences, um, degree, so on and so forth. And this professional connections can build a relationship with other professionals in the field. So in this way around, you are not just um, self-promoting yourself through online website, but you are also trying to connect with individuals across around the world who has the same fields with you. For example, um, you have the fields in customer service and you love to learn more about how to be an effective customer service. So you can get in touch with these people, ask for advice. So it's there's actually a lot of benefits when you try to self-promote yourself with the presence of, you know, um, online stuff like that. So, yeah. Yes, I do agree on you that one, Sarah. Let's discuss first with the one that you have mentioned about, you know, the personal website, so on and so forth. I think this will be very much applicable for those who are like developers out there that who needs to have their portfolio creative designers usually guys it's just just really about the technical exam or the interviews that we are really doing sometimes we are really asking or sometimes we are really doing like more of like a triple or double check with you with regards with your works of course so if you are a type of professional whose line of work is really into you know into creatives into designing web designing so on and so forth i think that would really great if you if that specific you know proof of how good you are or how skillful you are with regards with your portfolio so some they are using you know wix there are a lot of para mga diy websites that you can really use right now and of course in linkedin before when i joined linkedin i just really thought that oh, okay it's just part of me telling that hi i'm into human resource or hi this there's a network so and so forth but right now there are a lot of uses in linkedin number one you are correct on that one side choosing your network or making your network more you know bigger and bigger with regards with the community in linkedin it's just about you know looking for a job or it's not just about you know just making sure that your your profile is really updated to show how professional you are but it's also really about making you know connections or making networks this specific team i think it's not really that applicable to you right now but I think three to five years from now, you are going to be meeting them. You will going to be really like learning more about them. There are a lot of subgroups there in LinkedIn that I per really personally joined. It's not really necessary that it's for your circle, but it's also like for other circle, like when digital marketing is really booming, I've joined also there that I really wanted to learn what digital marketing is all about, what CEO and so on and so forth. And I've learned really a lot from them sharing their, their, um, knowledge their expertise and somewhat i did also some head hunting happening also and that's specific so yeah so basically just make sure in today's world i think being present really in a lot of social media platforms or online platforms is really necessary and of course showcasing your achievements i think that's the number one platform right so that you can really display there your certifications or the right. trainings you have achieved, so on and so forth. So it's really a good way to make your LinkedIn visible, to make your LinkedIn updated, and make sure that just by making it updated, really like to an online presence. Who knows? One of our recruiters right now may, you know, may headhunt you for a specific role. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. Thank you for that one sign. Sign now. Um, things that I want, want to ask also is with regards with, you know, how about for those specific people that who are not really confident for that one yet they are not confident it's because they think that their achievements is not really that enough or they think that i just only have like one or two certifications i just only have like this one achievement i just really have like less than three years or five years of experience that like any other all who's i can see in linkedin or in their resume that is very like powerful very like an expert on this one so what tips you can give to them Sai? right so that question is very relevant to for today for example um i am an applicant who only have 
one or two certifications, or let's say less than six months of experience in the industry I'm applying for, there are people who might think that that's a bad idea, or it might be, what do you call it? Um, I might be less experienced, so I might get the lesser of chances of getting the job. No, you should have you should have a positive mindset. And like me, um, I've been in this for in this industry for almost three to four years now. I've also started for, I've I've started from the very beginning, from the bottom of the stairs. <laughs> and then you just have to be patient. You just have to show to people that you're capable of, that you excel in this field, you have the skill, you have the potential, and managers, recruiters will see something good in you. And that's when promotion begins. And when you get promoted, um, you will get a lot more than two certificates. And there are also... um, Jen, you know, there are applicants who are afraid of getting interviewed, especially, let's say, for example, um, a BPO setup, for example. So they're afraid that, you know, their their English might, might not be too good. And there are also people who are born shy. So when we say shy, you know, the type of the very, you know, very, what what do you call that? Very... Um, like introvert, yeah. timid. Yeah, introvert, some timid, something like that. Um, I've handled people like that because uh, you've mentioned, I've mentioned earlier, I was a trainer before. So I handled different type of people, different personalities. And, you know, as a person, you just have to be an influence to them. You just have to motivate them. That I know that most of you watching right now might say that, ah, oh, okay, I got you. I'm also very shy. Do not be shy. Stand on your ground and, you know, be confident about, about yourself, um, about your achievements. Even though it's just less than six months, you only have experience three to six months, take that as your advantage. And always look, as I've mentioned earlier, always look for something in you that would differentiate or that would excel compared to others. So that's what I would try to yes. say. So I do not be that shy. Too. Right, Jen, do not be shy and come to our yeah. job fair. Come on your show, guys. And, you know, just make sure. And for those also who are really asking because they really don't have any certifications or don't think that their accomplishment is enough. There are a lot of free certifications, guys. You know, just really invest into yourself and then slowly start with one certification. Start with one seminar that is really, should I say, that's really relevant to the role. So my question is, how about if we do like a, into an opposite world? Like, I'm really like a person who is really like a lot of certifications, a lot of accomplishments. So how to make sure that I'm not really that bragging. I just really want to stay humble. So how would I really present myself, not just in an interview and then also into papers? All right. So let's say, for example, after you graduated college or let's say when you were still in high school and you know you're at the age of 18 and you started working at a very young age and let's say for example me i've started working at the age of 18 like a month after i turned 18 <laughs> so um 18 up until now so it has been a few years already and with that span of time i've had experiences in the industry so the question is very relevant in today's topic because, number one, should I write them? Let's say, for example, I've been to a lot of different organization and clients. Let's say I have 100 or let's say 50 experiences. Shall I write it all down? The answer is you don't have to write all of the 50 experiences. If I am the hiring manager, I will not read them all because number one, I will only read what's relevant. So for all of you, those watching our live right now, just include the most relevant experience that you have. Because as let's say, for example, as recruiter or 
as hiring managers, we don't we don't look into how many, you know, experience I would say for just on my personal opinion, we always look to what's relevant. And the next question is how long have you been into that relevant experience of yours? So you don't have to put everything. Let's say, for example, Jen, I've worked, let's say I work at McDonald's um, when I was in high school. And I'm applying for a customer or let's say customer service. Shall mm-hmm. I include my experience at McDonald's? What do you think, Jen? Yeah, I would really prefer if you really do have, if you are really applying for a customer service, it would really be like customer service related. Correct. So let's yeah. say, for example, you don't have to include your experience working at McDonald's, but start wherein you had the experience where you had to deal with customers. For example, um, well, dealing with co- McDonald's deal with customers, right? But actually, um, it has something to do that would be relatable to um, the, position that you're applying. the position that you're applying for. Let's say, for example, you had an experience at a BPO for three months. Disregard the months that you have worked with them. That is actually already an advantage. You should write that in your resume. So, for example, I work in this company for three months. Then what is your account or what um, you know kind of job you have worked for? So that where we will start to, you know look into details so yeah just, just, to add on, yeah, mm-hmm. just to add on that one side okay so if you are a viewer right now and who's watching like your resume is up to 18 to 20 pages guys please recheck your resumes okay so again number one what we would really love is for you to have of course because you've mentioned mom jen and mom Sai earlier that your resume should have a job description so and so forth guys it should be concise now it's not really like at the start of my shift, I've been doing this, and until the end, every Saturday is a monthly choo 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 choo. Guys, it should really like be like it's concise, it's direct to the point, and we see like experiences specifically for those who are really working like on a freelance or on an independent contractor setup. So, for example, um, if you are really like a social media manager, so. And not all of those 50 clients that you've handled, you are not really doing like a social media manager thing. So, of course, you just need to focus what you put into your resume. Like you tailor fit your resume or to the position that you're applying for. So, out of the 50, you just really had that 10 specific social media um, manager related experience that you've been handling that one. So, that's what you will going to be needed to put. Okay. But for example, we because we also have this, like those our engineers and architects who are watching and then they have been in the industry for 25, 20 to 25 years already. So we would really appreciate, of course, to have those all of your experience. But again, those are concise things like direct to the point, as long as it really depicts your experience, your skill sets. So I think that would be better. Okay. So yeah, I I get on, on you on that one side. So, Sai, just to wrap up, okay, because we are nearing now to the six p.m. Right. So yes. So what advice also that you can give to you know job seekers on how they can do their accomplishment and achievements during a job interview, like for a communications trainer, as for yourself, what you can give like any tips for them. Great. So. I know that you heard us right that we have um, job fair this coming Friday and we are encouraging all of you to join the job fair. And before we, you know, and we're nearing to 6 p.m. So before we say our bitter farewell to all of our viewers, one advice that I can give is just to, you know, um, be yourself. So when I say during the interview, because um, during the interview, you might be a little nervous. You might think that, oh, what if I do not get past through the initial? Do not think that way. You just have to think positively and just do your best. And also to effectively, uh, you know, to, to get a higher chances of getting the job. I have one tip for all of you. Number one is be aware of your own shortcomings, 
your strengths and your limitations. And another thing is try to self-evaluate yourself. What would be the areas of opportunities? Yeah. And start it from there. Start working from there. Because you have the whole week before Friday. <laughs> and you have a lot of preparations. And of course, don't forget to smile because let's say you get nervous, your facial expression actually affects everything. So don't forget to smile, be confident, and do not brag. Just try to, you know, remember the things that I've mentioned earlier and how to effectively self-promote yourself and always highlight those relevant experiences that you had that would in line to the job position that you're applying for. And at the end of the day, you may got the job or you may not got the job. Always aim for the goal. You know, don't lose hope. That's it, Jen. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much, Sai. And guys, really do hope that you have really learned a lot from our topic right now. Again, there's a specific, there's a thick, you know, line when we say self-promotion versus bragging. And here we have this, so just to wrap up, we have discussed a lot of ways how you can do self-promotion. Number one is, of course, during uh, what should be included into your resume. And so your portfolios, second is your online presence. One thing that we have added there, like the LinkedIn, if you do have like any other job-related platforms, you can also add there your, the things, your accomplishments, your achievements. And the third is during interview, okay? So we really do hope that you have take note all of the tips that we are giving to you guys. Those are the tips that how you can ace your job interview not just with Tatcha, but also how you can build connections, how you can build your networks, not just face-to-face, -face, but also in an online world, okay? So, do you have just to wrap up, do you have anything to share or to, to tell the viewers out there? Um, well, I would say that I hope that we'll see you on Friday. Shut up. <laughs> and I hope that you apply all the things that you've learned tonight um, with me and Jen. And always remember to be confident. Yes. Confident and beautiful with the heart. Correct. <laughs> mention. Thank you so much, Sai. Thank you so much, guys. Let's give a round of applause to Sai again. Sai is not really like new to you guys. If you have been watching really Tachi Careers and of course the official Tachi Outsourcing Services, I think they have just uploaded a video of you, Sai, oh, in their yes, our right. in YouTube, in our Facebook. So Sai is not really like new to you guys. She's been also like our host for our past company events. We've been uploading a lot of SDEs and some glimpse on that one. And this will not going to be the last time that Sai will be here in our Genesis show. So please make sure to follow, subscribe for us, for you to be notified on when we're going to be Sai. Be jury again here in our every Monday show. Again, thank you so much, Sai. Of course. Thank you, Jen. And thank you to uh, my Tatcho family for giving me this opportunity. Shout out to Sway and Lou. <laughs> Thank you so favorite. much. Okay, so again, guys, we really do hope that you have learned a lot from our Monday right now. I know that it's nearing to the last week of October, but again, guys, we do have something for you. For those who have just watched us at the middle or you've just been caught up with our video right now. So again, we will going to be dropping a reminder for our... October 27th job fair. So again, guys, we're going to be having another virtual job fair this coming October 27th. It will be displayed here in our screen. So the title of our job fair is um, yes, your route success. So basically here with yes, the quest for success. So in here, guys, you will we will gonna be having again an online virtual job fair, which will happen this Friday from 2 p.m. to 6 p.m. in the afternoon. Our Rockstar recruiters, part of the talent acquisition team, will gonna be keeping in touch with you for those who already registered. We will going to be doing our initial interview for you on that one, guys. 
So what are the positions that we are looking for? Okay, in IT and software development, we are looking for a senior IT and a full stack developer with UI and UX. If you want to be part of the touches internal or support team, we are looking for a senior talent acquisition specialist, maintenance staff, inside sales, B2B specialists, or corporate sales specialists, and of course, employee experience specialists. For customer service, if you are an experienced professional in line with the healthcare industry specializing um, customer service, just like Ms. Sai, we are looking for front desk specialist, healthcare billing specialist, pre authorization specialist, and pre certification specialist. For engineering and architecture out there, for those architects who are located in Ortigas, we are looking for landscape architects. Here in Cebu, if you are an AutoCAD drafter, engineering project manager, and spicers, we are looking for you guys. For accounting and finance enthusiasts, so we are looking for finance controller, senior staff accountant, accounts payable clerk, business valuation manager, U.S. tax accountant, U.S. accountant, and investment banking analyst. And of course, our e-commerce and digital marketing team out there, if you are an enterprise production admin, e-commerce development manager, creative designer, and digital advertising specialist, these register into uh, into our job fair platform so again where you were going to be seeing that one guys there are a lot of ways number one is just to follow our social media platforms check our facebook instagram viber and tiktok guys like anything our linkedin it's in there second is to check on the banner right now in here so if, if you want to be part of our virtual job fair this coming friday so there's a link below and if ever also that you want to be just a one click away please check on this video at the comment section there's a link in there or where you will gonna be submitting your application so again guys my name is jen thank you so much for being here with us today and together let's rock this week together happy monday and see you next week bye bye